worship service today. My name is Rob Edwards, I'm one of the chaplains at Wesley Mission Queensland and today Pamela Batson is going to be assisting me to lead our worship service. We light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and in him there is no darkness. Our call to worship. Friends, as we gather today, let it be in friendship. Let us be open to the Spirit's voice and receiving the word anew. Let God reveal to each of us renewed understanding and living hope for the days to come. Because we come gladly to listen, to learn and to understand and even more deeply how great our God is. Could we sing together today our first hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Let's continue our worship service today with our prayers of inv invocation and confession. Let's pray. Come Jesus, speak to us today. We long to hear your word again and hold it in our lives. We long to understand more deeply so that we can live more fully. For you, Jesus, show us a better way to live. Jesus, we offer ourselves to you again. We have so much to learn from you through your revelations and deep love. So come, Jesus, come into our lives. We are thirsty, Jesus, yet do not drink from the living water. We weary and we fall into unkind and selfish ways. Today we thirst for renewal. So refresh us, spirit of life. Your church is thirsty, Jesus, for a healthy community built on your way of loving. We're distressed to see divisions amongst Christians over matters that cover your deep love with misunderstanding and judgment. So today, refresh us, spirit of life. We are neighbours to local churches, yet we could engage so much more to share the good news Today, we pray, refresh us, spirit of life. Our declaration of forgiveness. Come, thirst no longer. Jesus calls us to love God with our hearts, our souls, our minds and our strength and to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. Unity as the whole people of God is Jesus' prayer. So refresh us today, spirit of life, so that we follow Jesus' prayer. Amen. Our gospel reading today is found in John 17, verses 20 to 26. Jesus prays for his disciples. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you, these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with, with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today, we hear the words spoken by Jesus at his final supper with his select friends, the last meal before his execution. He has reassured his troubled disciples that they will not be separated from him, and he has promised the Holy Spirit as a form of his continuing presence. He has stressed God's love for him and his own love for them, his disciples. He closes his farewell address by turning to God in prayer. He asks for the glory that was his before the world existed. This will mean life for his followers. He prays for his special disciples, for they will encounter the world's hostility. And finally, he prays for those who will believe through the preaching of the disciples. In other words, he prays for us. He prays for us. He prays that those who believe those who confess him to be the son of God and commit themselves to him in love may be one. 
The model for our oneness is the unique oneness that had love at its centre and foundation. In the final words of the prayer, Jesus acknowledges that the love which God loved him and out of which he lived and loved would be in his followers so that he also may be in us, that our lives would be in fact be centred and grounded in his love. When we watch the news on television or read the newspapers, it could seem all too often that the quality of love is rather scarce in today's world. Or maybe items about love are not too news newsworthy, whilst violence is. The truth is, however, that many people, young, old, and somewhere in between, are ruled by a sense of insecurity. They feel unwanted, they feel unloved, and they feel unnecessary. When a person internalises these types of feelings, they can get caught up in a catch-22 situation. You know, Jesus said, love your neighbour as yourself. People who feel unloved and unwanted often blame themselves for these feelings and find nothing good about themselves. And when this happens, when they don't love themselves, how are they going to be able to love their neighbour? And so it can make it all the harder to break out of the spiral of hopelessness, or so it would appear. Today I'd like to suggest that we need to take the message from today's gospel and re gospel reading to people who feel like that. For that message provides us with the hope that the future is not hopeless, but rather it is transformable. Transformation can happen. We need to internalise the message first so that we can know exactly what it is that we are to pass on. The first important thing to hear is that Jesus is praying for us. Everywhere that this gospel message is being read and heard today, people are being exposed to that marvellous fact, the fact that Jesus is praying for us. Jesus says, I pray for those who will believe in me and what does he pray? Firstly, he prays that all may be one. An apt prayer for the beginning of this week of prayer for Christian unity and reconciliation. And then Jesus prays that God's love for him might be in us. Early in his gospel, John recorded these now familiar words. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God's love is totally sacrificial love. And just, and just the previous to today's reading, reading Jesus said, had said to his disciples, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. We cannot love just because we are told that we must. It's just not quite the way it works. Jesus' commandment to love is not meant to be a new law. From Jesus' standpoint, love is not simply one virtue amongst others one principle amongst similar principles. It is a basic criterion of all virtues, of all principles and its norms of behaviour. Love is understood not as a sense or a feeling or as a sentimentality, but as a deliberately decided attitude and act of goodwill towards one's neighbour, even towards people who we might consider to be our opponents. It can involve men and women, boys and girls, colleagues, neighbours, friends and strangers. Being motivated by love leads to acts of wholehearted goodwill towards other people. You know that cartoon character Charlie Brown told Lucy that he loved humanity. It was people that he couldn't stand. You know, and unfortunately, it's sometimes easier to generalise about love than to be really specific. The author of a commentary on this passage wrote words that, make, that makes one think about what being specific really means. He wrote that love of other people is the exact yardstick of love for God. In other challenging words, we love God only as much as we love our neighbour. In the final words of, uh, of the prayer that Jesus acknowledges, that love with which God loved him and out of which he lived and loved would be in his followers, so that he may also be in us, 
that our lives would in fact be centered and grounded in his love. So if Jesus' prayer is to be realized, our oneness in the Lord, the love Jesus prayed would be in us, must be visible, it must be audible, and it must be tangible. People should be able to see it, they should be able to hear it, they should be able to touch it. And if it doesn't show, who will ever know? People look at us very critically in order to observe whether our actions match our words, whether our actions match Christ's words, and whether our words match Christ's actions. If I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died for me, do I in, I in return live for him? Is it, is it patently obvious to the person outside the church that it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me? Surely it is a sign of hope that during this week of Christian unity and hopefully all the weeks following that people all over the world and across the churches will be united in the common goal of re re revealing Christ's love both in word and in deed. May we be empowered by the Holy Spirit to reveal that love through our lives, through our words, through our actions, right here where we live, not only today, but each and every day from this day forward. Amen. Let us now come to God with our prayers of the people. Jesus, you pray that we may be one. Today we pray for our family of God, your people and your church, including local churches. We thank you for the breath of faith life denominations bring to all your people. We thank you for local ecumenical connections working together in neighbouring ministerial work. We give thanks for love expressed through small groups, Bible studies, prayer groups, fellowship groups, men's sheds, hospitality, food banks, refugee support, op shops and cafes that provide a place for, me, for people to gather. We thank you for the ecumenical councils drawing together denominations across the state and nation. In our unity, may we listen and learn and be a voice for justice. We pray for the leaders of the Christian churches who meet regularly, minister collectively and speak into public spaces on matters of justice, community care, and ways of peace, raising a Christian voice in the wider society. Thank you for the ways our mission outreach centers work collaboratively. We pray for the Ministry of the World Council of Churches, where global Christian leaders engage in significant de decisions pray for our churches and work together to bring about missional care, particularly in poor and war-torn countries. We are your people, Jesus, and long to draw together in unity. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's now join in our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
our word of mission and blessing. Jesus prayed that we might be one. Let us warm to this calling and live out the great commandment. Let God's love work through us, Jesus' message speak through us, and the Spirit energise our hearts to live out the unity to which we are called. So go in peace to love richly and share openly with all of God's people. Amen.